to the first live bot teardown. So excited to have you guys here. Um, we'll, you know, obviously wait for, for some people to trickle in make sure that everyone has their time. Um, in the meantime, you know, how's your, how's your Tuesday? What was a fun thing that you did this weekend, Em? This weekend, uh, I bought a lot of lights for my desk, uh, <laughs> which Unfortunately, none of them are showing in the way that I have this set up, but I want you to know that there's, there's a chromatic experience in front of me and it's great. <laughs> that is incredible. Love a good weekend plan that results in like productivity and happiness for your week. Yeah. I, uh, I, I learned a lot about wire management. Uh, cool. yeah. very, very great. I learned that from Mark, our, our resident. Uh, our resident voice of voice flow. Uh, he is uh, he is our chord master. Chord <laughs> master can confirm. Mark can organize a desk like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, um, Don. Good afternoon to you too. So excited to have you here. I know a few people messaged me in the community today and said that they were coming. We are recording this, so not a problem. Um, but we'll give people maybe like another few minutes to trickle in. And then we had some people uh, submit conversation designs to review ahead of time. But also if you would like to submit your own conversation design for review within this time frame that we have today, feel free to shoot it over in the chat or you can DM me within the community as well. Um, and we'd be happy to take a look. Uh, feel free to just um, Ho like hop in to VoiceFlow, hit that share button uh, and copy your prototype link. And that's how we can access the conversation design that you have as it stands today. But we do have two uh, designs submitted and then we did prepare some best practices if we didn't have anyone, any brave souls who wanted to share their, their designs for now. All right, cool. Maybe how many more minutes do you think? Maybe till the end of this month, this minute? <laughs> yeah, I feel like we, we can wait maybe two more minutes. Let's do 105 PST mm -hmm. to get started. Okay, sweet. Um, if you are tuning in from anywhere interesting, AKA wherever I'm not, throw it in the chat. Where are you tuning in from? I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado. I'm in the United States. Um, it's sunny here and like, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, like 17 degrees Celsius, I think. Is that sort of conversion? It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. <laughs> I am tuning in from Seattle. Uh, it is shockingly sunny outside, despite uh, I think Seattle has a marketing problem um, where everyone constantly thinks that it's raining here. Um, it is very nice outside. I may have to move midway through this because our cleaning ladies came an hour early. Uh, so if I go dark midway through this, you know why. <laughs> I will prepare. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, yeah, if you are tuning in, feel free to pop in the chat where you're tuning in from. Would love to hear who we have on the call today. Um, but I'm impatient. Oh, Jefferson, Missouri, 73 degrees, last week, 9 degrees. Done. <laughs> it was similar in Denver. Like last week, it snowed a foot. This week, 65 degrees and sunny. Doesn't make any sense. Spain, Madrid, we have a few team members in Madrid right now, Roberto. You guys should hang out. We do. I will be in Madrid as well in two weeks. Oh my God, I'm so jealous. Stay have tuned. So many people. So <laughs> Oklahoma, welcome. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow, we are all over the place. I love that none of us are in one similar place. That's so fun. <laughs> okay. I am impatient and it's... 204 my time. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to get started. Um, and we can get started with um, a conversation design submitted by someone who's live with us right now. Don, welcome. So excited that you're here. Um, and let me pull up the prototype link. Amazing. So we're going to start the conversation. This is a green horizon spot. So this is an Alexa skill that can help you uh, like understand and offset your uh, like environmental footprint, which is awesome. I think it's like super valuable, really cool tool. I'm excited to try it out. Green horizons can help you with a variety of carbon offset possibilities. 
Just say offset vehicle mileage, or offset air travel, or offset home utilities, or offset a known amount of carbon, or offset a fixed budget amount. At any time you can say, I need help to receive assistance. What can I do for you today? Awesome. So I'm not going to hold the space bar just yet. Um, but one thing I really like about this introduction is it kind of helps direct the user down the different kinds of conversation paths that someone can have when they're interacting with this conversation design. I think that's super intuitive, but like it really helps um, to make sure also that people aren't misusing your assistant. Uh, and instead, you're really making it crystal clear, like, hey, uh, you can kind of drive this conversation within these parameters, if that makes sense. Um, my only suggestion maybe would be um, instead of saying like offset vehicle mileage or offset air travel, uh, maybe the, the intro prompt could say, just say offset vehicle mileage, air travel, home utilities, a known amount of carbon, or a fixed budget amount, uh, just to make it a little bit easier if you don't have like a multimodal experience, trying to remember all of those voice inputs could be a little confusing. What do you think, Anne? Yeah, no, I think I, I totally agree. I think one of the best ways to really like set the stage for conversation design in general is in particular if it's voice to set what can happen. Where where are the ways that people can kind of go down in terms of paths? Um, but to Sarah's point, I think the more concise, the easier that you can make it for people to understand how they can set off those different intents is going to be imperative. So even thinking about, um, for example, maybe just say like, or you can inquire about vehicle mileage, air travel, home utilities, like even taking more of those words out to see if there's like a, if there's an intent that you can build around a, a shorter word that might mm -hmm. also be really helpful. Yeah, for sure. Um, awesome. But I like how you start off also the assistant with like what this assistant can help you with also. Um, it just makes it a little bit more user intuitive to be like, great, like I know what I'm signing up for. This is what this assistant can do for me. Uh, but I also know that if one of these options doesn't suit the needs that I have right now, I can say help to receive assistance. Like I think that that was introduced really well. So what can I do for you today? Let's see. What if I say, um, I'll do offset air travel. I'll do air travel. Offset air travel. Air travel carbon footprints are estimated based on your origin and destination airports, plus the number of airports that may be involved in between. Your itinerary will list each airport on your journey. For a non-stop flight, say, two airports. For flights with plane changes, say, three airports, or the appropriate number of airports on your itinerary. Hmm, that was a good description, because uh, I would always, I would think like, one airport is nonstop, but it is too, because you have a destination and a like origin. So based on your origin plus number of airports. So I have to say two airports. Let's do my last, I think my last flight was nonstop between Boston and Denver. So I'll, just, I'll do that one. Um, two airports, two airports. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Please repeat how many airports are on your itinerary. Two airports. I'm sorry, um, I didn't get that. Please repeat how many airports are on your itinerary. Okay, I'm just gonna say two this time. Two. I'm sorry, um, I didn't get that. Please repeat how many airports are on your itinerary. All right, I think um, it may just be having a little bit of a difficulty um, understanding the two airports. Maybe I'll try three, let's see how that goes. Three airports. Two or more airports must be entered. How many airports are on your itinerary? Three. Huh. So maybe it looks like there might be um, just a little bit of confusion within like the entities understanding like the, the user inputs for, for numbers specifically. But I think this is a really cool example of like no match and error handling because you can see that I didn't get the same error every time I, I did something with the that the uh, assistant didn't recognize. Um, I got the, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. But then when I said a number, we have the two or more airports must be entered. Um, so that was, that's helpful, I think, because it it can help prompt your 
your users to kind of rephrase the the utterances and and basically like the user inputs that they are putting in um, into your assistant. Yeah, I think like I think you nailed it there, Sarah. Like one of the one of the worst things to design for, but the best ways of creating a really good UX is very much so what happens when things don't don't go as planned. Um, a rule of thumb that we typically try to think about when doing conversation design is kind of a rule of three. Um, I think for every single different uh, UX, let's say if it's a higher stress environment that you're trying to work with, you might want to lower that, um, or you might want to kind of play around with how many times you want to reprompt someone um, to, to say their answer. But I would definitely recommend playing around with randomizing the different ways that you can say, oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you try saying blank is kind of a good way of bringing them right back in. Or in this case as well, let's say after, let's say three attempts, um, it's always good to have some form of help path to kind of go back or reset, restart, um, or kind of bring people back into the original experience, which could be helpful. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don said most of the testing was done with an actual device. Uh, maybe we'll restart and do vehicle mileage. So we can definitely try that as well. So let's, I re Green Horizons can help you with a variety of carbon offset possibilities. Just, just say offset vehicle mileage, mileage or offset air travel or offset home utilities or offset a known amount of carbon or offset a fixed budget amount. At any time you can say, I need help to receive assistance. All what right. can I do for you today? Don mentioned vehicle mileage, I believe. Yes. Um, so let's, oh, okay, interesting. Um, offset vehicle mileage. Is your vehicle powered by electricity or fossil fuel? Cool. We did it. Heck yeah. Um, one thing that I really like to do with conversational assistance, um, is, and this kind of helps make, um, the experience a little bit more conversational as well is recognizing the user input and then moving on to your question. Uh, so what can I do for you today? Offset vehicle mileage, um, like great choice. Is your vehicle powered by electricity or fossil fuel? Because if you think about a conversation you're going to have with someone like in person, if you ask them a question and they answer it, you don't just move on to the next question you want to ask, you know, like you kind of acknowledge their answer and then move on. And it kind of helps feel like you're you're having a more like natural conversation with whatever, you know, uh, conversational interface that you are, you're having a conversation with. Is your vehicle powered by electricity or fossil fuel? Man, I wish I had an electric powered car, but it is fossil fuel. So I will say fossil fuel. Cool. Okay, I really like this. So in order to estimate the carbon per footprint of your vehicle travels, I will be asking you four pieces of information. I really like that because when you are having like just a voice only conversation or even like having a multimodal sort of experience, um, you don't know how many questions that assistant is going to ask you. Uh, and so like kind of laying out, like I'm going to ask you for four pieces of information helps me as the user understand like, okay, how long is this conversation gonna take? Um, all right. Yeah, I think to, to add on to that as well, um, in particular with voice, this is a great opportunity to also play around with SSML and natural pausing or trying to emphasize what some of those options could be. Um, it's a really great and subtle way of just trying to, to really help emphasize um, in the way that you can't normally bold or italicize like you can in a chat bot. So would definitely recommend potentially playing around with some pausing uh, or some emphasis of uh, even maybe even in the introduction, what some of those ways that you can use the assist the assistant are. Really good tip. SSML is so fun. Like it just makes your experience just a little bit more heightened. Um, and it's like so, such a cool thing to play around with. Okay. Either of a few efficiency. So tell me the distance you wish to offset and if that it was in miles or kilometers. So let's say uh, 100 miles, 100 miles. Oh, tell me the distance you have to offset. And if it, okay. Let's see, um, try one more time. 100 miles. 
Oh man, it looks like we may have gotten into another sort of uh, loop here. Um, but I think that there were some really good like pro tips that John used within this uh, conversation design uh, in terms of, you know, ha having your introduction message really kind of be like the menu for your conversation design so that your your users can have nonlinear conversations and they don't have to be taken down one specific path. Uh, if you're going to ask a bunch of questions, make sure you let your users know uh, exactly how many questions you're going to be asking um, and uh, having different uh, replies for your no match scenarios and some sort of like uh, like exit hatch or escape hatch. Let's see, what if we try to ask for help? Because I know Don, I know Don programmed in, um, I need help to receive assistance. So let's see, help. Green horizons helps you understand how much CO2 or carbon is generated in your daily living routine. Currently, we can provide carbon footprint estimates for vehicle travel, air travel, home energy usage, carbon offset pricing, when the amount of carbon is known, and lastly, how much carbon offset can be purchased for a specified budget. To get started, ask Green Horizons to offset vehicle mileage, or offset air travel, or offset heating and cooling, or offset no carbon footprint or offset fixed price amount. Give it a try. So I really like this help message also. I think, you know, obviously not every conversation is going to be going down your happy path and the exact path that you want someone to, but giving your users that escape hatch um, and also uh, kind of encouraging them uh, with the like, give it a try at the end. I just, I think that the user experience there is really well done. Um, and so, you know, obviously not every conversation is going to go perfectly, but this was a really good example also of like how to make sure that your users are set up for success as much as you can control, you know, um, but then also giving them a way to kind of help themselves uh, and encourage them to continue to try and participate with your, your conversation assistant. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think I would like one of the things that I know Sarah and I had this in common definitely before even she joined because we both had a lot of experience with Drift. Um, and one, one of the things that I actually took away from doing a lot of testing in chat and I think actually still does apply um, in voice is kind of, a, it's basically a texting rule of thumb. Uh, you know the feeling that you get when you get a very long text message and you like get that notification and it takes up most of your screen and you're kind of like, oh gosh, um, in comparison to kind of, kind of when you have a little bit more rapid fire, or a little bit shorter on that. Um, I often find when it comes to designing how long a message can be in a single instance, you t typically want to follow a similar rule of thumb of how does it look and how does it sound via text? Um, how short or kind of how to the point can I get with it? Um, or how can I break them up into kind of um, back to back steps that you can even combine together? Um, and that might also really help in particular, I'm laughing at Don's comment right now. Um, uh, in particular, if you want to, let's say, take the same experience um, and duplicate that and bring that into a chat experience or a multimodal experience, it'll make that transition also a lot easier for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, my yeah, my background is in the conversational marketing world where it was very like chat on a screen. Um, but you know, short attention spans, people just hear what they are tuning in for and can sometimes tune out. So even splitting up your message blocks in two or like a few different blocks so that it may, kind of forces your assistant to pause could be an interesting strategy also so that people have time to like digest all the information that you want to give them. Awesome. All right, I will stop sharing here and bring up the next bot conversation sign. Um, thank you so much for submitting your um, conversation designs. Once again, you can uh, direct message me on the community um, or just drop your conversation design within um, the chat here and we'd be happy to review it in real time. Um, similar, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to be mean. I promise we're here to support you in your conversation designs. Um, this is a really exciting conversation design. Deirdre is on, um, but this was and inspired um, our first community uh, contributed template. 
So um, if you have a conversation design that you want to kind of share uh, with the, the VoiceFlow community, we are happy, thrilled, delighted, pumped <laughs> to have you contribute your conversation designs to our template library so people can kind of learn from the designs that you are creating and uh, iterate on them for their own usage. So let me share my screen again and we will go to the Polished Pro English Chat Design. And I believe this is a chat uh, conversation experience. So we got a voice only and now we have a chat um, experience. So I think this is also a cool way to see kind of like the different mediums of conversational interfaces and experiences that you can create. All right, welcome to Polished Pro English Chat. I am Stellar, your tutor bot. We can practice English anytime. I love that. And I love that there's a little image there too. So this is kind of like really leaning into that that chat aspect where you are looking at the screen um, and able to kind of see more versus just listening to a voice assistant. Um, what are your thoughts on this intro? Um, we unmute there. Um, yeah, no, I think I, I like the usage of kind of like the different steps in it. I like that you can kind of have that image um, I'm also very pro emoji. So whenever you go into a chat, it's good to use that. Don't use it in voice. It sounds very weird. <laughs> but uh, definitely um, like the breakdown of it. I also like in the sense where um, I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself on this by prompting, uh, what is your name? I have a feeling it's going to recall that as we kind of go throughout the experience. And, and I do love, uh, in a lot of cases, it's very common practice to name your assistant right off the bat. And it's almost as though the assistant is introducing itself to us in a very conversational manner uh, by calling itself seller. So that's really great. Yes, I also like when bots say that they are bots. Um, bots pretending to be humans generally don't get as, the, as much of the warm and fuzzies from their users because they expect kind of a more like human-like experience. Uh, but being like, I am your tutor bot kind of sets the expectation of like, okay, I'm talking to an automation, I'm talking to a bot. Um, so what is your name? My name is Sarah. Oh, so this is cool. Um, Deidre is using the uh, like typing indicator pauses in her conversation design, I believe. So that's kind of, instead of rapid firing the responses um, from her bot, she's kind of, uh, she made it so that it feels like there's someone on the other end typing. Uh, so it feels a little bit more natural in terms of like the conversation flow, um, instead of just getting like, boom, response, boom, response. There's a little typing indicator and one response. And uh, I, I like that. It's like the small things that really help with the, the user experience. And there it was, she used my name. Hi, Sarah, let's get started. How fun. Um, how do you feel about speaking English? Good, confident, nervous, blocked. I'll say I'm a little nervous. Let's see. Okay, Sarah, we're here to help. Oh my gosh, cool. Confidence is important when you learn English, focus on the person you're talking to. So that's, I think that sort of recognition, uh, I'm not sure if it's just for the nervous response, uh, it could be for any of them, but for me specifically, that felt like a really great um, acknowledgement of the specific response that I gave the bot. And then the bot reassuring me like, it's okay, we're here to help, like, here's what, here's what to do next. Um, so kind of like, having that more conversational experience, recognizing what the user inputs, having a custom response for that, and then moving on to the next part of your flow. Okay. Just to kind of add on to that as well, I think like, I, I definitely agree with what Sarah's saying here, like being able to call back instances where it feels as though like you're basically building trust with your user in the situation. And by them telling you how they are feeling kind of throughout that process, you know how much trust you need to be building. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would definitely be curious to kind of see what what some of the the responses would be should Sarah say that she was very confident or um, what the differentiation would be there. But I love that it's an acknowledgement, it's a tip, and now it's like getting into the how to get to that confidence. And I think like that cadence is really, really great. One thing that just happened while you were chatting also was that we had the bot kind of reprompt me as well. So um, that's that's a really cool feature that we just saw kind of in like live in action, uh, which which is um, 
delaying your bot kind of like pushing or your, your conversational assistant kind of like move, trying to move the conversation forward more. Um, so let's, uh, it also says like, please choose an option. Please choose what you want to talk about. So uh, leveraging the buttons here. I love a good button response. So I'll say, okay, sure, let's get started. Let's warm up this one small time. Okay, it's easy to talk about the weather. Um, when you start your day, you can check, where are you today? What is the zip code? So this, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna put in my zip code, see how that goes. Actually, I'll put in this one. Let's see what the weather's like in my hometown. <laughs> how is the weather going to be later? Nice, rainy, snowy, or is a storm coming? It is going to snow today. I think Boston is supposed to get snow, so. So I guess like my question here is like, are like, it would be really cool if the bot was like connected to the weather API or something like that, where it's like, what is the zip code? It pulls in the zip code and it says, it looks like it's going to be like nice today. How would you, you know, have a conversation about that or, or something along those lines? Uh, the zip code might be a little bit personal in terms of information, um, but, if it's like for a specific purpose or it comes back around later, like makes total sense. Um, but, oh, here's another way someone could ask you about the weather. What's it like outside today? I feel like I'm learning a lot about how I would learn the English language. It's very cool. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with Sarah on like, I would definitely practice with trying to keep it to, to one question um, and one response to this. So being like, where are you today? Try saying, or like try typing a city mm -hmm. um, or like kind of like showing an example. Um, the zip code m is also very targeted towards the United States mm -hmm. versus a lot of other places um, that you could potentially want to be targeting that might have actually more of an audience of folks that want to build better, uh, a better English cadence. So that might also be something you want to consider for localization. Um, and I, I do think if there is the way of pulling that up or connecting it to an API to kind of do that test or to be to kind of call that into the conversation, um, that would be really, really cool. Um, I don't know if it would be necessary if you remove the zip code and if that expectation would kind of be the same, but it would be interesting to see what that user test would return if people kind of have that same thought over and over and over again. Definitely. I think I also just noticed um, at the end of each question, uh, so far there's been a little emoji kind of indicating that that is the question to respond to. And just from like a visual perspective, I really like that because it breaks up the kind of like filler words of like, good job, let's practice another. Here's another way someone could ask you about the weather to like, here's the question that you should answer. Uh, so I really like that. What's it like? I said, um, it, it's sunny outside today. Okay, I think that might be the end of it. But I can retest and reset the test as well. Um, awesome. Uh, they put, uh, oh, we put weather API in the, the new template. Oh my God, amazing. Oh, cool. So if anyone wants to test out this conversation design, they can just go to voicewell.com slash templates and they can try out Deirdre's um, English speaking uh, or Polish Pro English chat uh, conversation design and they have the weather API in there. How stinking cool is that? Um, I did just reset the test, um, but we can also go through someone else's or we can share some, you know, like best practices when thinking about, uh, you know, your next conversation design or iterating and optimizing on the conversation designs you have right now. Uh, I think this is also just a cool sort of reminder that like user testing can really help shed some light on parts of your conversation design where uh, people might have a different, um, might use a different intent or an entity than you've and you've programmed into your, your conversation design. Uh, and so having your friend, your family member, your spouse, your roommate, uh, one of our product advocates said your kids, uh, kind of just test out your conversational experience can maybe shed some light on uh, where you may have uh, 
not thought about like a random response that someone could give. Um, but would happy to be go to like retest, re restart this test, or we can move to like best practices, um, like final thoughts, whatever is important or interesting to those on the call. But thank you for the two brave souls who submitted their conversation designs. For Definitely. Us. And I think as well, um, to your point, Sarah, on like user testing and like why it's important in this is like the whole point of us having these, uh, these bot teardowns per se is so that we can kind of learn together. Um, and can, I think in a lot of cases, it's really hard to get out of the design seat when you kind of spend all your time in the canvas, you kind of know how you want things to play out, but it's not really until you kind of get that into the hands of a user where you see where some of the ways that people can kind of get blocked. Um, and I know for some of you, you may be leveraging transcripts inside the product. However, there's also lots of ways that you can even, for example, capture some like longer strings of answers that people have. Um, like for example, let's say at the end of your three no match and it says, oh, like I need help. You could potentially prompt the user by saying, oh, I'm sorry that we weren't able to complete like X, Y, and Z. Um, what can we do to, to make this better? And it's an open prompt for them to now answer. Um, and in a lot of cases, you can actually have that so you can save that response and you could potentially even push it to somewhere like a Google Sheet or an Airtable or even a notification to yourself for sometimes, um, which could also be a really great way of kind of gathering ongoing user feedback. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we, there was just an update pushed uh, to the capture block. So it's a lot more powerful um, and is able to kind of capture, obviously, um, <laughs> some, some longer uh, inputs, either written or uh, spoken from your users. So that could be a really interesting way to like make that no match and, and like uh, reprompt scenario a little bit more like seamless and personal as well. Um, we have a member of the community, Terry, who's going, who like drops some serious knowledge on no match scenarios. He has written a blog post for us. Should be being, should be published shortly. It's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, I think maybe we can kind of talk about best practices. And then um, Don said uh, we can try Green Horizons again towards the end. Okay. Cool. Yeah, okay. um, so, Sounds great. <laughs> um, so I think like one thing that we can kind of go over is um, obviously like in both of these sorts of conversational experiences and scenarios, they were a little bit more um, complex than just like linear conversations, especially when we saw the Green Horizon spot and we saw that there were basically like five four or five like different paths that we could go down, um, figuring out and kind of understanding like how to organize your canvas around uh, having those nonlinear conversations could potentially be helpful as well. So we're not just talking about, you know, like looking at your final product, but now we're kind of talking and pivoting more towards like, okay, uh, what should my canvas look like when I'm trying to build a, a conversation that looks a little bit more conversational um, and uh, is also organized. So it's not just, crazy um, and and having like utterances and intents and like capture blocks all over the place. Um, so I'm gonna pull up a template that I think does a really good job of kind of explaining uh, this like organizational system. Uh, and that's the in-car assistant. Uh, this is also on the templates page, but um, you can see up here in the in the layers area, we have topics and flows, also known as components, um, where the topics kind of help me as a person who didn't design this conversation understand like what are the areas of focus that this assistant can do. So in Don's case, for example, like there would be offset carbon emissions, offset airline emissions, offset vehicle emissions would all be their own topics. Um, so that's like kind of to start and each topic has their own set of intents as well. So like if I hop into like fuel station or maybe let's do, yeah, all right, I'm in fuel station. Um, one, it opens up, oh my gosh, I just 
booped around to a lot of places. Um, but when it opens up the intent for like fuel station um, in general. So here I can see like all of the utterances for the specific intent, but also like, is this available from other topics? So this could be really interesting in Don's case, for example, uh, where if you're in the flow for talking about offsetting carbon emissions, and then you say offset airline emissions, um, but you're not necessarily done with that entire uh, like set of questions, it'll take you to, it'll kind of like jump you to that next intent. Uh, and that's that's this toggle right here, the um, available from other topics. Uh, so it's called a global intent. Um, in terms of like best practices, definitely for like some of these larger, like high level topics for sure. Um, and then flows live under those topics. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining this, but um, do, what are your thoughts on topics and flows? Yeah, so I think that in a lot of cases, I like to think about them as like, this is your organizational layer to conversations, period. Um, in the same way that we kind of think about how we organize our desktop, all of the files, all of the ways that we organize, whether it is the, the types of files that we have, which you can kind of see in content management and your dialogue manager, or whether it is the way that we want to organize the different paths that we have in here. I think this is a really good example of ones that are very clearly laid out, have their own different um, their own different um, individualized actions that you can take from there. Um, but I think where I, for a lot of conversation designers, this often comes as an afterthought. And I think one of the things that, or the reasons why we think about topics, flows slash components, um, and why we've done this release is because as we know in the way that people set up for the web or for mobile, a lot of times people think about the structure and the wireframe first. This is kind of the conversational AI version of that, of you building out what are all of the potential avenues that you want to go build for and what is going to be that organizational system as you continue to scale. Um, and so really excited to kind of get more feedback on this tool as we've just released it and Sarah released an incredible blog post about this that goes into a lot of different details. Uh, that I'll link in this kind of right after I keep speaking. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, and if you have not had a chance to create a project that has a flow in it, I would highly, highly recommend playing around with it. Um, and even Sarah, I know, I know you're probably on the, the templates library right now, but uh, Nico actually built a really great one that has a ton of flows in it. Uh, and it is the, the animal quiz one. Um, and each individual animal that is an answer within that template, for example, is an individualized flow. So that, that's another good example if you want to kind of see something that might be a little bit, um, that might be a different perspective on how to also use it. Yes, definitely. Um, when we talk about flows also, uh, those are great sort of like reusable, uh, a reusable series of steps that can be great for, you know, like API calls, data management, but also um, parts of the flow kind of similar to this, where uh, you answer a question and then uh, you ask anything else. So if I were to go into the anything else flow, I think it's just a big old project, so it takes a little bit. Um, it's kind of, is there anything else I can help you with? Looking for an intent um, and bringing people, uh, and listening for the intents that match each of these topics. Um, so but I think that's just like a really great example also of how to use those flows uh, to print to either bring people back to kind of like the quote unquote main menu, or um, if you answer a similar question over and over again, if you have, um, you know, like a, a project or a product um, that has a specific pricing amount to it that people could ask in the middle of, you know, a conversation, uh, having those, those be components that are available to be triggered at any stage of the conversation. Um, definitely, definitely super helpful. I think like uh, so lastly, what you, oh, sorry, Sarah, <laughs> I, I would say as well, like for those of you who do share your prototypes with people, you need help, you want someone to look at a specific spot within your conversation design, flows are also a really, really great way to draw attention to the right type of, or the right area of your conversation design, um, which can become more and more of a headache as you build things that are more complex. 
And I love kind of what you you call down. And I really want to double click on uh, you talking about reducing redundancy or repetitive work. Um, and I think in a lot of cases, these flows are a really, really good example of having something that's a callback, having something that's constant, having something that you might want to create once and standardize across your org, like a welcome message or maybe even an ear con that you want to call on because it's part of your brand. Totally. Um, awesome. I think we have, we can have time to uh, revisit Green Horizons and then, you know, give people a few more minutes back in their day. But um, let's just revisit real quick Green Horizons by Dawn um, and typing the utterances instead. Let's try it out. Welcome to Green Horizons. Green Horizons can help you understand the carbon footprint generated from your everyday routine. Some of the most common carbon generating activities include driving to and from work, heating and cooling your home, and air travel. In addition to providing carbon footprint estimates, you can purchase these offsets through Green Horizons, therefore helping you get closer to a carbon neutral position. At any time, you can say, I need help, to learn how Green Horizons can provide carbon footprint information for you. With that said. Awesome. All right. We can oh wait. Maybe I'm not totally familiar with um, this intermission that only happens at, in first five visits. Ask that much shorter. That's really cool, Don, of having the intro message kind of change depending on how often you use the tool, too. Um, I love a good, like, welcome back sort of message. It's it doesn't feel like much, but it just like, recognizes that the user is returning and it gives you the warm and fuzzies a little bit. Um, is there best practice in terms of like typing for these prototypes? Um. Yeah, um, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, um, Don, but maybe, um, would it be possible for you to reshare this link and click when you're doing the sharing uh, text and voice? I think it might be on a voice only prototype. That is very possible. Um, but either way, I can see that you also like made it, or either like you made a few changes um, to like even the second sort of visit message. Um, and I like the, with that said, how can I help you today? Being the two separate messages. That's fun. That's a good like linking of the two messages. Um, also Don, we can always um, like share some feedback asynchronously too. Um, and just like give you, give you some tips in the DMs or in a channel in the community. Um, if we don't have anyone who wants to submit their prototype link as well. Um, want to make sure that anyone has the opportunity to if they are willing. Um, and if not, then we can kind of give you all a few more minutes back in your day. And thank you all for joining. Um, Don, I saw that you shared a new link. Let's see. Welcome to Green Horizons. Oh. Green Horizons. That one looks like it's just voice and visuals. So maybe we'll do a review of that um, asynchronously. We'll totally give you some feedback offline. Um, hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday. Thank you all so much for joining us. It was a pump. It was just a blast having you all here. Um, yeah. Thanks all so much. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, and of course, uh, if you are not already active in the community, definitely use that space to, to drop any links. Um, if you're kind of waiting in between um, our next teardown, um, it's a really great opportunity to kind of get more people and eyeballs on the work that you're doing. So thanks again, everybody for sharing. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye.